Hey there, and welcome to Gods of Gravity Legends, the series that covers the most influential players in Gods of Gravity history. Now today we have a player that has been requested for a long time, and for good reason. This player has a competitive story that is as epic as it is inspiring. Allow me to tell you the tale of our most powerful tournament champion, Dragon vs. Cats. Dragon first joined us way back in May of 2022, right when challenges and cosmetics were first being added into the game. He first appeared in Tournament 7 in June, and he actually managed to win his Round 1 match. But unfortunately, he was defeated in Round 2 by a player named Popcorn Shrimp, one of our top players at the time. A couple months passed, and not much was heard of him until our first version of Ranked Q was added into the game. The official Ranked Gods of Gravity ladder. And although the leaderboard only had eight spots, Dragon vs. Cats would be one of them, and thus began his redemption arc. In Tournament 10, he reappeared, and with newfound skill and technique, he'd make it all the way to semifinals. Yeah, and Dragon Cats is a new player. I'm, I'm excited to see them in the tournament. Once he got there, he found himself face to face again with Popcorn Shrimp, but this time, things would go differently. In a surprise upset, Dragon vs. Cats actually won. I'm, I'm excited to see how far uh, Dragon v Cats gets in this. This left him with one more opponent to face in the finals match, Black Lemur. Black Lemur had just gotten fourth place in the last tournament, and just 10 minutes before, he had also beaten Panda, the then reigning champion with six tournament wins to his name. So for Dragon to come out on top, after having only played in one tournament before, things were not looking too good. But of course, any fans of Dragon will know how the story ends. Oh, but I think they'll have just enough time. Yeah, I think it's going to be close. Oh, oh, oh no! But they've lost a lot of ships because of that. Yeah, See that's true. How Black Lemur holds up. Yeah, if you have a really good fight, like maybe really. Oh, but it looks like. Look at this rush speed. Oh, that man. looks like it's going to be it, unless. I don't know. I don't know if it's even possible to come back here. I can oh, they lost the round of you. Uh, wow. You won. And this finally ushered in a new era for the Gods of Gravity competitive scene. Yeah, and how cool to see a new player come in and win. That's great to see. Something that I think is really interesting about the transition from Panda to Dragon, aside from the amusing animal connection, is the fact that it sort of showed a difference in how players played Gods of Gravity. If you've seen our video on Panda, you know that when he was champion, his favorite ship was the Torpedo, as its superior range made it perfect for doing damage without taking losses. But fast forward to Dragon's era, and you'll see a much different game. Dragon was famous for being a fan of the heavy laser ship, but why? Well, players from Dragon's era are much more active in their combat. They used wormholes to jump from base to base, especially between moons. With this strategy, slow-moving torpedo shots were much less dangerous, and instead, the most useful ship was one that could damage quickly up close, aka the heavy laser. And once heavy lasers started to replace the new planets in tournament map design, Dragon's reign of terror in the tournament scene would truly begin. He got first place in tournaments 17, 18, and 19 all in a row. His skill became unmatched, his love for heavy lasers was truly unrivaled, and soon he had a record equaling that of pandas, with two duo victories and four solo victories in total. But with tournament 30, Dragon vs. Cats sealed his status as the ultimate Gods of Gravity champion, with that seventh brick making him the most represented player on the pillar. Whew, wow. Uh, anything else to talk about? Um, he was a major pioneer of community tournaments alongside Frost, uh, and he also made a very cool map called Dyson Spheres, which is included among the Trash favorites. This map has a really unique mechanic that is definitely worth checking out if you've got the time. His other maps, though, are perhaps less savory. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this highly requested episode. And now that I've gone through a bit of the competitive scene history, you know, there's a lot more to cover, so hopefully you'll be hearing more of it throughout some of these videos. Anyways, as always, let me know who you'd like to see in a future video in the comment section below. See you next time.